Hey, so today we will make this fluid particles following a curve. And as you can see, it's pretty adjustable. You can adjust the path that the fluid is taking, as well as the shape of the stream itself. Uh, even like rotate it, sort of like DNA sequence or something. And of course, we can increase the particles, the, their size and everything. That's that's all included, as always, with my tutorials. But before we start, for those of you who follow Blender tutorial scene on YouTube, before you call this a plagiarism or that I stole this from Max Edge, because this, yes, I made it on purpose, look like Max Edge's geometry nodes tutorial about the very similar topic. But instead of using geometry nodes, we are gonna make a speed run out of this effect and get it at least two times faster than the geometry nodes version. Because this one does not use it, it's just a simple particle effect. It's for those of you that, like me, are not very good at geometry nodes and don't want to feel excluded from the Blender scene these days. Because it seems like every tutorial, every new thing about Blender is about geometry nodes. And I say a firm no to this, so we will make this very similar effect but without any geometry nodes. The only difference that I could not reproduce that Max Edge has, which you could say is his edge over this tutorial, is that I don't know if it's possible to have a displacement on a metaball surface. Not that I'm aware of. So without further ado, with all this lengthy introduction, let's jump into the fresh blender scene. Right, here we will delete everything and create, let's say, plane or anything. The geometry doesn't matter because this is gonna be our emitter. So right away, go to the particles tab and click plus to add a new particle system. When you click play, right away you see particles are spawning. Great job. Now the next step is the meta ball itself. So let's create a meta ball one is enough and then go into our emitter the particle systems and go to the render tab change the render as from halo to object and then here in the instance object choose the meta ball that we just created so that instead of the particles the meta balls will be spawned instead they are super small now so let's bring the scale up to one and now it just looks like some gloop or sludge or whatever else you can find in the sewer anyway this is great it just means that it's working so now the next part the actual curve itself so shift a curve and the Bezier curve or any curve that you like I just like Bezier it has a nice French name so why not now position is like so maybe rotate it on the x-axis 90 degrees and then go into the physics tab and enable force field and instead of the type force we will use a curve guide now if you click play instead of the goop you have a worm that is following the curve so you can already move the curve rotate it basically play with it and create your path in which you want your water particles to be following but as you've probably noticed the longer the curve is the faster our snake uh, follows through the curve and that is because if we go back to our emitter would be a nice idea to actually call it a emitter and then into the particle systems you see there is this thing called lifetime this basically is a lifetime of each of this particle and so because it's following the curve guide it has to follow the whole curve within its lifetime which right now is 50 frames so if you increase it to let's say 500 then all of a sudden each particle has way more time to complete its life mission let's say what you can also do is adjust the frame start and end of our emitter because this basically says when the particles will be spawning and when they will stop being spawned so for the end let's put the entire length of our animation in my case it's 250 but you can use whatever suits your scene and for the frame start it's great to put it as a minus lifetime so minus 500 in our case so that when we are on the first frame, we already have the whole path covered with the particles because they basically had the 500 frames of pre-warm before they were uh, before the first frame. So that is amazing. And now to the size of the particles, because as you can see, they're all the same size. And we have an amazing feature in Blender, which is called scale randomness. You just increase that bad boy and you can immediately see that we have some nice variation. We can also decrease the amount of particles to say 500 so that we see a little bit of break in between them and also if your viewport is struggling with too many particles or something you can always go to the metaball and then into the metaball settings and here the resolution in viewport maybe bring it up to something like 0.6 the bigger the number is the less accurate the metaball is and the more ugly it is but also it run, runs much smoother so just keep that in mind and later when you will render it it will look fine anyway so don't worry about it so okay we have a scale randomness now the next thing is it all follows the line pretty close 
flows to the, to the curve that we gave it, but because it's based on a curve, we can always go to the edit mode of the curve and select one of its points and make sure that the animation is running so that we see the update of what we are doing immediately. So with the point selected, Alt S and you can increase it in order to make the particles run a little bit in an offset position to, to the to the curve itself. We can do the same with others as well. And you can see now that they are sort of going around the curve. And this is also adjustable. Simply click Ctrl T. And then as you sort of twist the curve, you can see that the particles are getting twisted as well. And now they are moving in this sort of uh, DNA sequence uh, shape. I have no idea what's the professional name for that. If you know, share with me in the comments. I will make sure to read that. Uh, the small ones are a little bit too small for my liking so I can always go to the main meta ball and just increase it which is going to increase the base or go back to the emitter particle settings and just change the scale randomness a little bit lower so that they don't get too low so let me actually delete most of the segments because they look super shitty right now and instead I will try to make it look nicer now, one thing to keep in mind, remember that the first vertice of the Bezier curve has to be in the same position as the emitter, because if you move it, then all of a sudden the, the whole particle thing is being offset by the location difference between the emitter and the first point of the Bezier curve. So just keep that in mind, or you can even like parent one to another so that when you move it, it all moves uh, together in a tandem. Just something to keep in mind. So yeah, let's just make it a little bit thicker. Um, sorry for this weird cut, but OBS just stopped recording for a while while I was changing the shape. But don't worry, you didn't lose anything. So yes, with all the curve already set up and the particles as well, you can see that now the last thing that we can actually adjust about the particles itself is they are currently moving in the same speed all of them and as you remember the speed depends on the lifetime so we can increase the lifetime randomness to like 0.5 in order to have you know some of the particles uh running faster than the others if we put it to the extreme then you can see that some of them are just like zoom zooming zooming through everything so just keep it quite subtle and this is the base setup the last thing is the material itself because it's water it's extremely simple but i'm gonna show you anyway so we get in a new viewport change it to shader editor select the meta ball new material name it or not it's up to you delete the principal bsdf and add a glass bsdf because glass looks very very similar to water so just go into the material preview view and hey you already have water you can also change the color to something more bluish to have this uh, a little bit more obvious that hey it's water uh, and not something else maybe add a little bit of roughness and this is basically it so as i said we literally made a speed run out of the same effect that max edge had but i 100 percent recommend checking out his tutorial as well because um he's not just showing you the effect and how to get it but also teaches you some lessons about geometry nodes and all the stuff around it along the Way. so definitely something worth to watch and if you watched until this moment then the rules are you have to subscribe sorry to drop it on you like that but you know i'm not the one who's making the rules also i think we will make this a tradition on this channel i would like to highlight some of the community work that you guys are sharing with me with me on twitter because i think you're like doing really amazing work so first of all raviness uh, some of my older tutorial the raider thing but you gave it a really really nice twist uh, with this with the circles around really love it uh great result good job for you uh, next we have uh hanlotk hunlotk i'm uh, not sure if i pronounced it correctly uh who made this fireball thing or rather fire in a ball thing but i have to say it looks super close to the actual tutorial like i was pretty impressed i wasn't sure if i'm looking at my own render or uh or not i mean a uh, really great job so that's another one uh, also, by the way, these are not in any particular order. I order. I just I just choose the one that I like. So anyway, uh, Guillermo Ciozza with this really really cool. Yeah. So there was a music in this clip. That's why I don't think I can uh, play it for you here on YouTube because of the copyrights. But I recommend go and check it out yourself. Uh, it's really cool. And the last one, sort of an extra, because I plan to only have three per episode. Uh, but this one was just really cool because it shows a difference between a Voronoi texture and a noise, uh, which actually shows me that the person did a little bit of his own experiments, you know, check this and that, and this is exactly 
uh, the reason why I'm making this tutorial so that you can guys experiment and you know come up with your own uh, creative stuff. A really great job Tanishku and that would be it for this week's community work and if you manage to do something cool with this one then I would love to feature it on the next episode. So just make sure to tag me on Twitter, uh, link for that is in the description if you create something cool and I'll make sure to check that out. So hope you enjoyed this episode. It was a little bit more loose and kind of less stick up-ish, if that makes any sense. But I feel like this, uh, this form sort of fits me more. So I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.